the objective for Union Station was to elevate the railroad tracks over Douglas Street. At the time, it was creating a lot of congestion. Uh, there, it was a safety factor involved. Um, a lot of the more prominent Wichita citizens lived in College Hill, so they had to cross all of these at-grade railroad crossings to get to their homes. There were several depots in town, and if you were to go from one train to another railroad, you would have to go to a different depot. So the spirit of a Union Station, and a lot of the major cities were starting to get those around that early 1900s, is to consolidate all of them into one building and then you could transfer to another, not unlike a modern airport, if you were to switch from one airline to the other. Lewis Curtis is the architect. He's a Kansas City-based architect. And he was a, for its time, a very contemporary architect that did a lot of work with various railroads, including the Santa Fe, and the Frisco. Two of those two, two railroads were tenants in this building as well. And the Santa Fe oversaw a lot of the design uh, and uh, a lot of the uh, construction of this and the planning of this as the ma major railroad that participated in this. A lot of the interior design style was uh, based upon their standards through their uh, Fred Harvey buildings. Uh, Mary Coulter was the interior designer at the time that uh, was very Southwest influenced in, in her approach um, and kind of did her representation of Native American styles of the Southwest. And a lot of those colors and forms were expressed in the interior design of a lot of Santa Fe Railroad buildings. And that w was influenced here a little bit, but mostly this was Lewis Curtis's design. Um, the main facade that you see out here facing Douglas is a Beaux-Arts style. Beaux-Arts style was very popular. The difference with this building and Lewis Curtis' approach is he made the main entry this Beaux-Arts style out in the front, the main facade. But as you explore the building, as you move from the uh, north to the south, you'll see a lot more of a prairie style influence, some have referred it to, uh, maybe some Art Nouveau influences, it was very eclectic, uh, but he wanted this building to be full of natural light. So some journalists at the time during its grand opening referred to this as the daylight station of America. It's very unique. It's, it's not as large as some of these other cities, but it is grand and distinct because of that. It, it, it's um, a play of mass and void with a lot of concrete and terracotta forms and then a lot of glass. Well, this is the main waiting room. And if you were to switch trains or were waiting on a train to arrive, this area had a lot of benches in it that where everybody would sit and wait. This is one of three clocks that are still in this building. Um, the original system was set up was these were slave clocks to a master clock that was in the station master's office at the lower level. In Topeka, a master clock that would send signals via telegraph to all the stations along their line during a certain time of day and everybody had to make sure that their clock was synced with the master clock in Topeka and the whole network and of course and then make sure everybody's on the right time so I'm running across some periodicals that have photographs of this space um, I believe they're National Railroad magazines advertising these lights and these are the original lights so here we have the harvey house the uh, restaurant space from the main waiting room and it, it, it has these properties almost as if uh, this play of mass and void and it gives prominence to this space same thing over here between the concourse and the main waiting room even this ticket office with the station master office upstairs is an isolated mass building, if you will, within the grander building. So we're in the historic Harvey House room. This was originally a restaurant from the Fred Harvey chain of restaurants and 
Fred Harvey was based, uh, at, he, he lived in Leavenworth, um, and his idea was basically what is now a, uh, would be seen as a first modern adaptation of a chain restaurant in the United States. So this is the only part of stained glass in this building. Most of it's just, uh, is, is the clear glass, um, but the, here in the dining area, I mean, stained glass does a couple things in addition to it looking neat, but it also blocks out a lot of the direct sunlight in here for the diners. You know. So I mentioned before how this was actually compromised during the urban renewal renovations when they added this other floor for more office space and here this was, you didn't have this large volume. That floor went all the way and attached to this wall and compromised a lot of the original plaster work, a lot of the, this rope detailing that you see here and a lot of this was restored and what they had to do in some areas where it was cut for the floor structure is duplicate other portions of this with a mold and then patch the new pieces on and you can't even tell where it was replicated. Most of this terracotta that you see here, is, this is the color it was. There may have been some touch up here and there, but uh, the, the color pattern that you see here was mostly inherited and already here. It, but this part of the concourse had a soda fountain that was done by a German architect that was located on this side. It was operated by the Fred Harvey Company. On the north end of the concourse was a newspaper stand also operated by the Fred Harvey Company. So if you were to come in off of Douglas toward the trains, you would come straight to this concourse and turn here to the west and then we'll be approaching the subways to board the trains. Okay, so this is the subway to the trains. There was uh, originally three ramps that went up to the track level. We've had the gold leaf paint, which has survived over time over here. That's a pretty neat feature that we have to the station, to the tracks. So on this end of the building, near where the newspaper stand was, as you go further towards the south is the baggage area where you'd come and get your baggage. And there was a baggage elevator on the other side over here. They would bring it from the train to the, on a cart into an elevator at the track level, drop down the uh, freight elevator to the pedestrian level here, and then you would come and get your bags. We're at the track level. Uh, the tracks would have originally come through here on either side of these head houses from the subways that we were at earlier. And at the urban renewal project in the 1970s, Amtrak was still using Union Station and they moved the Amtrak waiting room to track level. So this was the entrance to and from the trains and we are at where the Amtrak waiting room was. So this was the station master's office. Again, this is the space that to access originally, you would get to from the ticket office below. And it was almost like an aircraft control tower in a way. It's glass on all sides. What the station master could view here is the concourse and the main waiting room, and he could view the trains all at the same time. On the third floor, this was an office space for the railroads and it's a really neat space to look and you can see the trains go by, you can see the plaza and the activity on the plaza and, and uh, it's probably one of the neater spaces in the building. So we're at track level here, here's the top of the subways where people would go to the concourse from the trains. There was originally a railroad track here, there were tracks on either side of that head house, and then there was another one that was closer to the main line where it is right now. And here, but there's also some interesting pictures of FDR and, and uh, Eleanor Roosevelt up here on their visit. And uh, another presidential visit that was scheduled was Woodrow Wilson. I'm 
I'm Drew Meek, and I am with SPT Architecture here in Wichita, and we were the architects for the renovation of Union Station, as well as the other buildings in the Union Station complex. And we helped Occidental Management with a strategy for long-term investment in this building, and uh, with a renovation that would satisfy the requirements of the National Register of Historic Places. Uh, I also serve on the board for the Great Plains Transportation Museum, your neighbors across the street, home of Steam Locomotive 3768. And one of these locomotives, a lot of these locomotives like this, pulled the passenger trains that would serve Union Station. Thank you.